If you feel trapped into spending money on laundry detergent and have ever wondered if it's possible to make your own, I have good news for you. Today, I'm going to show you how simple, cheap, and satisfying it is to make homemade liquid laundry detergent. In fact, you can wash your clothes for pennies a load. Hi, I'm Michelle. Welcome to Chocolate Box Cottage. I share useful, beautiful, and thrifty ideas and recipes to help you create your cozy cottage. Today, we're tackling laundry. I've been making my own laundry detergent off and on for about 10 years, and that's given me time to assess the effectiveness of commercial versus homemade. Friends have been asking me for a long time to share my recipe for laundry detergent, and I've always hesitated because I felt it wasn't perfect enough. I mean, how could something I whip up at home compare with industry? Well, you know what? It's perfectly good. It gets our clothes clean, it saves money, it's easy to make, and it has a nice smell. The only drawback to homemade laundry detergent is that it is less effective on sweaty workout clothes. Rather than take an all or nothing approach, I buy a small container of commercial detergent to keep on hand specifically for workout clothes. Now, let's talk about ingredients. Our ingredients include a bar of Fels naphtha soap, borax, washing soda, water, and some essential oils of your choice, which is optional. All the ingredients should be easy to find at your local grocery or discount department store. They're not expensive, and you will have extra borax and washing soda for other cleaning projects and products, which we'll tackle in future videos. After you make one batch and you give it a try, I would suggest that you keep on hand enough ingredients to make a year's supply of laundry detergent. It is such a good feeling to have everything you need to take care of a year's worth of clean clothes. For supplies, you will need a five gallon or 18 liter bucket with a lid, a large pot, a grater or a knife, um, a whisk and a large metal spoon. You don't want to use your wooden spoon here. Measuring cup or a scale. And if you have one, an immersion blender. Now this isn't required. If you don't have one, it's perfectly fine. <laughs> I'll post the formula in the description box below the video in both standard US and metric measurements, along with detailed directions so that you can copy and paste and print it off to keep in your homemaking binder. You keep a homemaking binder, right? Even if you keep computer files for recipes and homemaking hints and tips, I strongly encourage you to keep a hard copy, just in case. I measured two and a half gallons of water into a bucket. Actually, I'm using a clear container so you can see what I'm doing. And it doesn't need to be warm, just cold tap water is fine. Keep it securely covered with a lid while you're working to protect small children and pets. This is especially important if you're working with a five gallon bucket on the floor. Uh, unwrap the bar of Fells naphtha and grate it with a cheese grater or you can use the grating disc in a food processor or you can just use a knife and chop it to bits. It looks like grated cheese curls when you're done with it, but it's not. So keep it away from little kids. And we also have eight cups of water heating on the stove over medium to medium high heat. Once the water boils, add the grated soap and stir with a metal spoon or a whisk until melted. This will take five to 10 minutes depending on how finely grated the soap is. Once the soap is completely melted, add one cup borax and one cup washing soda and stir until dissolved. Give it a few minutes to make sure they're both completely dissolved. The mixture will turn foamy as you stir, especially if you use a whisk, but don't worry about it, that's normal. Let's check to see if it's all dissolved. There's no grittiness left, that's good. 
now that the borax and washing soda have dissolved, it's time to pour the melted soap mixture into the bucket of water. Let's stir thoroughly. The soap has a nice, mild, clean, old-fashioned scent as it is from the Fells naphtha. And we could leave it the way it is. If you have some favorite essential oils you'd like to use, now's the time to add them. I enjoy the combination of tangerine, rosemary, and lavender. So that's what I'll use. 30 drops tangerine, 25 drops rosemary, and 20 drops lavender. Other nice scents to consider are lemongrass, rose geranium, grapefruit, and you can add a little eucalyptus or tea tree oil for antibacterial qualities. You could even craft a signature scent that to you always says clean laundry. Let's give this a little bit more of a stir and watch it begin to gel. Now don't worry about getting it perfectly smooth at this stage. It's not important. What we're gonna do now is cover it securely with a lid. Again, we're thinking about the safety of small children and pets and set this aside to cure overnight. This is what it looks like the next day. The mixture has congealed to form a thick gel floating over liquid. We need to break it up and smooth it out. You can use a whisk and some arm power and get in there and whisk it thoroughly until smooth or if you have an immersion blender, this step is almost effortless. Move the immersion blender up and down all throughout the bucket to make a smooth, pourable liquid. We have laundry detergent! Yay! Use a funnel to help you ladle your laundry detergent into old jugs, clean, or jars for storage. Fill jars two-thirds to three-quarter full, leaving some air space at the top for shaking. Since your homemade laundry detergent doesn't contain stabilizers, it may separate. Simply shake well to recombine. Keep one by the washing machine and store the rest. When it's time to wash a load of laundry, measure out one quarter to one half cup per load, depending on how large the load is and how dirty it is. I use a quarter cup for a full size load. I recommend using a measuring cup, at least in the beginning, to make sure you're getting the right amount of detergent. Too many of us are using too much detergent and effectively pouring money down the drain. As I mentioned earlier, I've been using homemade detergent for about 10 years, and I've not had any problems in that time with my washing machine, either with an older top-loading washer or with my newer HE high-efficiency machine. But use at your own risk. Consult your manufacturer's instructions and use common sense. Your homemade laundry detergent can be used full strength to treat strains. Keep some in a squirt bottle for that purpose. The ingredients for a batch of homemade detergent cost me $3.03 in the US in 2020. That $3.03 cleans 224 loads of laundry. 224 loads clean for three bucks. That's barely over a penny a load. What are you spending on laundry detergent? I went to the store and checked I looked in a national brand and the jug cost $29.68 and the label said it cleans 158 loads. But reading a little more closely, I discovered that was 158 small loads. Full-size loads require more detergent. 
So that $29.68 cleans 40 full-size loads. In the course of a year, I could spend $192 washing five loads of laundry a week with a commercial detergent or using my homemade laundry detergent, I spend $3.50. That's a savings of $188 a year, 74 cents a load. What could you do with an extra $188 a year? I'll tell you what I'm doing with it. I am investing in bulk food storage. So many money-saving projects require a significant upfront investment and a long span of time before you see any return. This one, the ingredients cost less than a jug of commercial detergent to get started and you're immediately saving money. Well, I think the economics of homemade versus commercial is fascinating, but I'll get off my soapbox now. The next product that might be on your mind it's fabric softener, right? Well, in my next video here on the Chocolate Box Cottage channel, I'm going to show you how to make pure, natural, floral, and botanical vinegars using plant materials and water. Floral vinegars carry a clean, natural scent that works perfectly to soften jeans, towels, and other laundry items. They're easy to make and they cost mere pennies. I can hardly wait to show you. If you enjoyed this video, would you give it a thumbs up? And I hope you'll consider subscribing too. Remember to click that little notification bell below that'll let you know the next time I add a new video. Well, thank you for joining me here today in Chocolate Box Cottage. It's been good, clean fun, hasn't it? Looking forward to seeing you next time. And in the meantime, may God bless you with a clean and cozy cottage. Bye-bye.